Abba's heart, finding our way back to the Father's delight. Abba's heart, finding our way back to the Father's delight. Y'all, let's pray real quick before we get started. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, let's just, Father, I'm just taking in less of, less of me, more of you, less of me, more of you, less of me, more of you. Mm. Heavenly Father, you are so good. You're so good. Thank you for, I just want to thank you this morning for Abba's, uh, for the, for the authors of this book, for Heart of the Father Ministries, for the calling that you have placed on Neil and Matt Lozano's life and their entire organization, that they would stand in the, in your authority and in your power and produce works such as these so that other people might come to understand their authority and their power in you. Help us, Spirit come, Spirit come. Holy Spirit come and help us to understand. Help us to embrace what we're learning here. Help us to embrace it. Help us to walk in it. Just help us to, to, to begin to wear the mantle, to begin to wear your mantle, to come to understand what it means to wear the, your ring, that you put shoes in our feet and a ring on our finger and that we belong to you. Help us to understand our glorious inheritance. Help us to understand how, how beautiful and perfect and unique and unrepeatable we are and how we are yours and we belong to you. Help us to grasp who we are and who you are. Gosh, come Holy Spirit. Can you just imagine how changed the world would be if we could all just totally grasp this and walk in this authority? Help us, to, help us to speak your words, to be your hands and your feet, and to spread your kingdom. And we offer this prayer in the most powerful and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I got really pumped whenever I was reading this chapter. It was just exciting to me. It's exciting to me. Um, standing in authority. Standing in authority. Uh did y'all, I don't know, if you're not Catholic, you may not have recognized um, the, the, the scripture, Matthew 8, verses 8 and 9. Um, the very first part of that is what we say um, during the prayers of consecration. Lord, I am not worthy that you would enter under my roof, but only say the words and my soul shall be healed. This is the scripture verse that that part of the mass comes from. Um, and I love that. I love that. You know, whenever we say that, um, you know, before we take communion, you know, as part of our, uh, as part of our recognizing that we're not worthy, right? That everything that we do is on his authority. Um, but what's it mean? What's it mean to wear that ring of the father, you know, to have this royal authority to represent our father? And there's the three scripture verses. I wrote those down. Um, Matthew 5, 1 Peter and 2 Corinthians. Um, so we are ambassadors for Christ as if God were appealing uh, through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. It's like, it's like we are Christ in the world today and we have that authority. Um, coming to understand the difference in power and authority. I loved the way that he articulated that. Um, I loved the way that he articulated that. Power is the ability to make something happen. Authority is the right to use that power for a righteous purpose. Um, authority is the right to act on behalf of someone else. So when we carry the authority of the Father, we have the right to act on behalf of Him in the world today, just like Christ did. When Christ walked this earth, He had the authority, and then He passed that authority on to us. That's the as, as part of being a part of his family, he passes that authority on to us. And we all know the scriptures that Jesus said, and you will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. It is that on that authority with his power that we operate in the world today as sons and daughters. Um, you know, we, we stand on his authority. The, the, uh, do you understand the authority that you have as a beloved child of God? I really loved the story of, um, oh, what was her name? Teresa. 
this is a lot of information, but I can really relate to Teresa's story. I can very much relate to Teresa's story. And um, whenever there's something that's not of God that happens and you come, you know, you, you, the shame that you can carry, the shame that you can carry and how that, that shame can, um, can influence the decisions that you make until you recognize, until you are enlightened, until you are met with the overwhelming love of the Father, the overwhelming love of the of the, the Holy Spirit, that relationship of love between the Father and the Son, that you have that encounter with love itself and it changes your life and you come to understand that you are not the sum of your sins. You are not what happened to you. All right, you're not the choices that you made, that you have an identity and your identity is because of who he is, not because of who you are. And you change, you're forever changed after that. And the weakness that she felt in that moment and the distorted perception that she had of her identity after her abuse, you know, for a long time, I was not aware of how deeply I was blaming myself for allowing the abuse to happen instead of resisting. You know, no matter the circumstance, we... we because of the work of the enemy, we can come to blame ourselves and feel dirty and 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 tainted and used and not worthy of the identity that we have in Christ. And when we have that encounter, that encounter with love itself, and we come to realize um, that He purifies us, that He redeems everything, um, then our lives can change. But we have to accept that. We have to come to understand that. And so, you know, he shares he shares Teresa's story. And, and, you know, can you relate to Teresa's story? It may not be exactly the same, but are you able to relate? And do you allow yourself to see how the encounter with the love, with love itself, changed her perception? It changed her identity. And what she, the next time that she was faced with a similar encounter, Satan would have loved to have used that to continue um, to continue to hold her into bondage or to bring her back where maybe she had freedom, but she was faced with it again. And she could have very easily went back into that old way of thinking, but instead she stood on the authority. And it was like the spirit that was within her rose up and she spoke on that authority of the father and told that man to sit down, sit down. For the first time in my life, I was able to stand up for myself, for my dignity, and for my purity. And it's a process that she went through to understand um, her, her dignity and that her dignity comes from who she is in him. Um, as she came home to the Father, she grew in the awareness of who she really was. The feelings of fear, weakness, and frailty that characterized her experience in the elevator were not near to her true identity. For those of you who don't have the book, um, there was a 16-year-old girl that he's talking about here that um, found herself alone with an older person who um, sexually abused her and in her... Um, in her fear, probably in her young age, she didn't fight back. And so she took on shame and she took on fear and she blamed herself for allowing it to happen. Well, when you're a victim of abuse, you never allow it to happen. The vi And, and the, the evil one itself would like for you to believe that somehow that you were not powerless, that somehow you are to blame. And the victim is never to blame. The victim is never to blame. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter, you know, where you're at. The victim is never to blame. At 16 years old, whenever someone sexually abuses you or does something to you and you don't have, you're never to blame. You're never to blame. And so at 33, um, she found herself the potential to be in a similar circumstance alone again with a person who was sexually aggressive and she stood on her authority and she probably spoke to him with an authority that came from a deep, deep place because it was the authority of God, the father. It was the authority of her. It was a holy authority that she stood on. And then the evil within him cowered down because it knew who it was looking at. All right. And that's what happens when you, when you stand on that authority and, and, you know, just a beautiful representation of how when we come to understand and come to know who we are and the authority that we have 
to stand on and the power with which we speak, the power with which we operate is not ours. All right. We're given that as a gift. It's our inheritance. And, um, and we have the power to change the atmosphere around us because that power is from the Holy Spirit. You can change the atmosphere around you. Imagine being on that subway and how that atmosphere changed. He went from, um, an oppressive perpetrator to a crying child who just wanted to leave. That's the power of the Holy Spirit to cast out evil, to cast out evil. I don't know. I just got so excited, so excited reading this. It was like it, 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 it spoke to the spirit within me and, and just thinking about all of you who are doing this study. And if you've never really understood what it was like to pray in the authority that you have as a child of God or to to walk in the anointing that you've been given because he's placed a ring on your finger and shoes on your feet. It's like the whole world is getting ready to change for you. And that makes my soul so happy. It makes my soul so happy. And it, it you know, it's a gradual process, I think, coming to understand. First, it's like, um, it's thinking a new thought and realizing, wow, you know, this can be for me too. Um, it's thinking a new thought, but you know, and for many people, it's coming to understand a person that you've never really known. All right. So it's just like any other relationship. The more time you spend, the more you come to understand. And the more you do that, the more confident you are, um, in who he is and then who you are in him because you come to trust and you come to believe in that. And it's, it's in that authority that you walk because God's not a liar because he doesn't lie. Because he is good. He does he can't be anything that he's not. Alright? And and we have free will and he wants us to freely choose to walk in what he has for us. Understanding that other people are not walking in what he has for them. That's why there's evil in the world. But we carry the authority to cast out evil. We carry that authority through his power in his name. To cast out evil. All power is in the name of Jesus. All power and authority on heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Have you discovered what it means to walk as a child of the Father in this world? Have you discovered what it means? You know, that's what this entire book has been about. Is realizing that our Father in heaven... That, we're, that we've been seeing him through a veiled lens of pain and wounds and an imperfect father. Because if our earthly father, uh, if our earthly father was imperfect, which they're gonna, he's gonna be, or if he was absent, how we came to perceive the father is through a lens that's wounded and distorted. And Jesus comes to us to say, and says to us, hey, let me go introduce you to my dad. Let me go introduce you to my dad. So come in, So this entire journey is about getting to this place right here, getting to this place right here, where we understand the authority that we've been given. We understand, have we discovered what it means to walk as a child of the Father in this world? Where are you, where are you on that path? Are you just now... Are you just now stepping onto the path? Are you just now coming to coming to understand that there is a father in heaven who loves you? And there is and he sent his son Jesus to redeem you, to take you to meet his dad? Or have you been walking on this path for a little while but getting beat up by the world because you didn't because you were still walking in woundedness and bondage? You know? Have you not fully been able to understand because your wounds run so deep? Where are you at on this path? Spend time reflecting about where you're at on this pathway. Do you know what it means to carry his authority? Are you coming to understand? Has, are, are you thinking new thoughts? You know, are you, are you opening yourself up to something new? He's got so many things for you. He's got so many things for you. He's got so many things for you. To carry the Father's authority means we are in union with the Father through His Son. And we carry the power of that relationship into our spheres of influence. See, we don't have authority over the entire world. Okay? We don't have the authority over the entire world. But we do have authority over where God has placed us in our spheres of influence. 
We carry authority in our homes. We carry authority in our relationships. We carry authority in our places, um, in our friend groups. We carry authority in our ministry. In you know, if you, if if God has placed you into like doing, it, you know, maybe it's at a shelter, or maybe it's at a soup kitchen, or maybe it's something like, um, you know, a community civic organization, or, you know. Um, I don't know, wherever the Lord has placed you, that is your sphere of influence, okay? And you can pray in the authority and take authority in that place. It goes back to like the um, like the, the centurion, okay? He knew what it was like to have people under him and he knew what it was like to have people over him. Well, God is over us. We have the authority that we've been given, but we have also, um, we've been positioned in particular places, Um by the logistical genius who is the creator of the world, created everything from nothing. And he has placed us here in this moment for such a time as this, placed you. You weren't born two centuries ago because you were placed for this particular season, in this particular time. And you carry the authority of the Father in this season, wherever you are at. Bloom where you are planted, my friends. Bloom where you are planted. You carry the authority in that place. So we have to know what authority we have and what authority we don't have, all right? But we can pray with the authority of the Father wherever we are at, wherever we are at. You have the authority. You carry the Spirit of the, God, of the Lord in you, and you can change the atmosphere wherever you are. You can carry the light of Christ with you wherever you are, wherever you are. He shares five principles of authority. You know what? That's what we'll talk about tomorrow. The five principles of the authority that we carry. But today, I think we just, you know, there's a great article that I'm going to post in the comments. It's from a website called catholicwarriors.com. And it's about spiritual warfare. All right. And and I stumbled upon this five or six years ago um, when in my therapy practice, there was... Um, I just sensed, thank you, Holy Spirit, before I had language for what I was looking at, I sensed that what I was seeing was not necessarily a psychotic issue, but that it was um, the manifestation of um, something not of God. And um, I just felt like I needed to be protected myself, but also how do I approach this in a spiritual, in a spiritual way? And so I went researching. And um, I stumbled across a website that was um, about spiritual warfare, and it's called CatholicWarriors.com. And there is a, a heading on it called Praying in Authority, Authority versus Petition. And so the first sort of um, information that I ever received on this was, um, it was just sort of like information on the difference in where I, where a person would have authority and where a person would only be able to ask for something. So when you pray in authority, you pray prayers of command. We take command over a specific thing that God has given us authority over, and it changes the way that we pray. Everything we pray does not have to be petition because we've already been given the authority to pray in his name as sons and daughters through our baptism. We have that inheritance. And But if you don't have the information to draw from, then you wouldn't know that. And so for a lot of us, that's what this book has been about. It's been about information. It's been about putting information into the filing system that is our mind so we can pull it out and utilize it when we need to utilize it. And so there's, I'll post that in the comments. It's it's called authority versus petition. But I'm going to tell you something. Reading those resources, it brought so much information into my into my life that I was unaware of. The way that Satan can come in, the way that he can come in um, through things that we come into agreement with, through words that we say, um, generational type stuff, um, witchcraft, various means that Satan will infiltrate 
that are so subtle that we might not even know. Or perhaps agreements that our fathers or forefathers or generations past have come into agreement with. And because of the nature of spiritual warfare and what we know through scripture is um, that we are still held by the sins of our Father and um, that we can break this stuff off. We have the authority in the name of Jesus because, because he's given it to us, because he's placed rings on our fingers and shoes on our feet and, and you know, a coat around our shoulders and, and that authority that we have. And so um, it's just information, you guys. It's just information and it changes the way that we pray. We do not always have to pray in petition. Yes, we can ask God for things. It's not dishonoring him, though, to pray in the authority that he's given us. And I think that was a that was a paradigm that I had to, it was a shift that I had to step into. Because I, who would want to dishonor God, you know? Who do I, who am I to pray in a way that commands certain things? Like, is that dishonoring him? Is that disrespectful to him? But when you come to understand the authority that he's given you through Jesus' death so that you could be reconciled back to him, and you come to understand that he wants us, the whole reason why he gave us his son was so that we could be a part of the family, so that we could walk in the authority. It's a dishonor to him not to pray in the authority that we've been given. And it's probably a lie from the enemy to think that we always have to be so submissive and ask for everything. You know, we, we do need to discern where do I have authority and where do I not have authority? But we've been given the authority and it's dishonoring our father to not walk in that authority. He wants us to claim our inheritance. You know, are we ashamed of the inheritance that we've been given in him? Well, if you walk around scared, you know, scared of every little thing and not walking in the authority that you've been given as a child of God, it's a dishonor to him. It's a dishonor, and in a way, it's disobedient, you know? There's a holy boldness that he has called us into. Maybe it's not going out in the public. Maybe it's just in your family. Maybe it's in your own relationship, in, in your intimate relationships with the people in your circle of influence, all right? Maybe it's in your family. That's your first place of ministry is your family. It's your first place of ministry. But coming to understand who you are, who he is, who you are in him will change absolutely everything. When you And when you can grasp the authority that he has given you because he loves you and that if we everything we do comes from a place of love, we see other people differently. We don't have to agree with everything that we're doing to love them, to see them through his eyes, to advance his kingdom. It's just powerful stuff here, this whole authority thing. It's powerful, and if it doesn't get you excited, read it again. <laughs> read it again. Read it again. Go back and sit with some of those previous chapters so that you can fully embrace that this is for you too. That this is for you too. No one is excluded. No one is excluded. No one is excluded. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've, what's been done to you. It doesn't matter. No one is excluded. No one is excluded. All right, y'all. Whew. All right. So tomorrow we'll talk about the five, the five principles of authority before we move on. Hope y'all have an amazing Wednesday. Stay safe out there. Um, if I could just impose upon you to keep my son and his colleagues in prayer today um, and for their futures and for all law enforcement and all those first responders who, um, the hidden heroes, I think, who just go above and beyond to place their life on the line so that we can have the freedoms um, that God has given us, the freedoms that God has given us. Um, so that we can feel safe and secure. And, and I guess I just feel like St. Michael the Archangel, I just ask for you to intercede for them. Intercede for them and go before them as they as they try to take care of God's children. Clear, clear the heavens for them. Just keep my boy safe. All right. You guys have an amazing Wednesday, and I'll see you in the morning at 7 a.m. 
God bless you.